We're thrilled to have you with us as we celebrate this grand opening tomorrow. Uh, today is all about you. The ride is yours. And there's no one else here. So we're going to uh, turn you loose into the ride, and I'll come back in a little bit and give you some instructions on how that will work. Uh, but first, it's my absolute honor to let you have some time with the creative minds behind this attraction. Uh, Jason Sorrell and Neil Engel are our Universal Creative team members who are the masterminds behind the experience you're going to have today. So without further ado, Jason and Neil. Allison Lundell, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> of the PR staff. <laughs> We've done nothing to make your stay more enjoyable. That's the PR staff right here. So. Well, uh, I'm Jason Sorrell. I was the creative director for Race Through New York, starring Jimmy Fallon. This is Neil Engel, the show producer. Uh, this is the culmination of about three and a half years of, of active development and production. Uh, nine years, if you ask Jimmy, uh, because he first... No, eight years. My math. I'm not a math and science guy. Uh, Jimmy first came to us back in 2009 when he returned to NBC to host Late Night, and it is true that he did reach out to Mark Woodbury and the Universal Creative staff and said, hey, I, you know, I'm back at NBC Universal, I would love to do something in the parks. Uh, Mark said, oh, we'll get back to you, which was another way of saying thanks, but no thanks. And then uh, literally a few years after that, and that was basically because we didn't have the, the right fit for Jimmy at the time, so we eased him into our park world. He's the host of our tram tour out at Universal Studios Hollywood, and then in 2014, when he took over The Tonight Show, around that same time, we made the decision to refresh Twister, which was uh, once on this spot. And uh, at that point, we realized that with an opening at the front door to our New York back lap, there was an opportunity to do something with Jimmy. So we reached out to him and said, the time has come, uh, if you're still interested in doing something with us. And of course, uh, he readily agreed. And uh, we began development on, on this particular attraction. Uh, Jimmy loves theme parks, he loves what we do, um, and that was why he reached out to us to begin with. And he was also really passionate about doing something that celebrated New York, uh, the, the home of The Tonight Show. And that resulted in what you see before you now. Uh, we worked really hard to try to figure out the appropriate story to tell. We wanted it to really uh, emerge organically from the world of The Tonight Show, because a late night talk show, as we've been joking, doesn't necessarily scream thrill rides. So we were really working hard to try to figure out what we could do that would feel right. And we ultimately found our answer uh, in the show itself with all of the wacky celebrity races that Jimmy does uh, with all of his pals. Uh, most notably, the Hemsworth brothers. I believe there are 111 of them working in Hollywood now. <laughs> Each one progressively more good looking than the last. It's obnoxious. Uh, it went to the point that they've actually established the Hemsworth Cup, and that inspired us to create the Tonight Show Cup. So this time he's taking on the entire audience, his entire studio audience, in the ultimate race through New York City. Um, he's outfitted with a custom vehicle that we've created for him called the Tonight Rider. It's, uh, it's street legal, on the street, in the sky, in the water, and even out in space. And of course our guests are participating in the world's first flying theater. So, um, three and a half years of work, uh, we've really worked hard to bring uh, Jimmy's vision to life and not only celebrate him, but The Tonight Show. It's a pop cultural institution, just like a lot of the properties that we celebrate here at Universal Orlando. Um, focusing on The Tonight Show and, of course, bringing 30 Rock to life with all of the care and detail that would go into building a Hogwarts or a, or a Diagon Alley. We really took that seriously, and you can see the results of that around you now. Um, we're excited to get you upstairs to experience the show and our unique approach uh, with our virtual line, which Neil is going to tell you a little bit more about. Thanks, Jason. Um, uh, thank you all for coming today. Uh, we're really excited about today and tomorrow, of course. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the virtual line. This is a brand new concept that we're introducing here at Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon. Um, when guests uh, purchase their tickets and come into the park, they can download the Universal app, and they can actually fan through it and discover that Race Through New York, starring Jimmy Fallon, uh, has reservation times open all day. And they'll actually be able to look at up to eight specific times that they can return to the attraction and not have to wait in line. So what they, what they do is they say how many people are in their party. They say we want to see it at you know between 2.30 and 3.30. And they're free to you know experience other adventures in the park, like Despicable Me, or even all the way over to The Simpsons, or whatever they'd like to do, shop, dine, whatever. And then when they come here, 
they don't have to wait in line. You know, it's one of the things that, you know, uh, our guests are always telling us, boy, you know, we love the parks, we love Universal, but boy, waiting in those lines, right? You know, so uh, with the new virtual line system that we hope is going to catch on with the rest of our attractions, um, they, get, they get that chance to literally experience the park without waiting in long lines, and we're really excited about it. So what happens when they get here? Well, if they have the phone, they make their reservation time. If they don't have the phone with them, as you know, sometimes some of our foreign guests you know, don't have uh, you know, United States phones, they can go to a kiosk, which is located just outside the attraction, and have one printed for them using a touch screen. So they can actually do the same thing that they do on the app on these kiosks, and they'll get a printed ticket. When they come back to their attraction at the time that they've selected, they literally hold their phone, which has a QR code, right up to the console where they see the first NBC page, and it counts them and admits them into the attraction. When the uh, guests enter the attraction, they're going to see the first page, which is in that room that you just came back from, and they're going to be handed a ticket like you have in your hands. And I know you're probably wondering, why are all the peacock colors on my ticket the same color? You know, the NBC peacock has six colors. Well, we actually have six colors also. And what we do is we advance the audience, as we call it here, from space to space within the attraction where we have all kinds of different surprises and fun on the way up to the actual ride platforms, which are upstairs. So what happens is the peacock signs that you see around the attraction will actually change, will actually change, <laughs> will actually change, to, to one color. Okay, so, and that color may be the color that you're holding in your hand. And when you do, the pages are going to say, hey everybody, if you've got an orange peacock card, it's time to move upstairs to Studio 6B. So, as they get up to Studio 6B, they're treated to never the same entertainment in the, in the form of the ragtime gals from uh, the uh, Tonight Show, as well as maybe even a uh, appearance by hashtag the panda, yeah. if you're familiar with them. <laughs> And, uh, Why, Neil, look, I believe the peacock colors have changed. <laughs> I guess, Jason. So, so the peacock colors change to that color, meaning that everyone who's got a red ticket is welcome to come upstairs and experience Studio 6B. So, and as you can see, it changes back to the NBC colors until the next color is called. We have additional light cues by looking at these uh, chandeliers and also lights that you'll see upstairs in the Studio 6B area that also carry the color that is being called by the ride. And any NBC page that you see is, is, wel is, is going to welcome you to wherever it is you want to do. You're not even, you're not even uh, forced you know, to go to the ride if you don't want to. If you're having a great time with the ragtime gals or you're having a great time with hashtag the panda, it's no problem. You're welcome to stay as long as you want and the pages will admit you when you're ready. So it's really an exciting new concept for us and um, in test audiences we found that uh, people are really, really liking the fact that it's, it's a narrative adventure just like a lot of our attractions because we're all about story. It's a narrative adventure that you experience from place to place as you go without waiting in line. So it's really exciting. We welcome you, and I hope you have a great time this afternoon. Okay, Allison? Okay, so does everybody understand that? Yeah. Yeah. Virtual line is what happens when you're outside of the building. Okay, so what happens with the peacock feathers and the colors, as Neil just mentioned, is not virtual line. That's just the experience you have here. So if you have any questions about that or if you want that step-by-step -step process, it is on your presentation.